Today, I want to tell you about this antenna. The easiest to build copper and PVC antenna. Here's a picture of our Tuesday morning A Street Cafe hairy legged ham meeting, which happens every week. And if any of you are available for it, we always have a really good time there. And uh, anyway, one, uh, one Tuesday, uh, I was mentioning to people how much, how much readers of QST like simple antennas and how, how surprised I was when I won one of my now five cover plaque awards for the silly little antenna that I think Ernie originally had the idea for, to use two coat hangers back to back as a dipole. And that, that article got an amazing amount of response, and again, as I said, I won a cover plaque award for it. So we got to talking, he, Ernie, and I, and, and Jim, uh, oh, he came up front there today, or you, uh, we got to talking about uh, uh, the easiest, simplest antenna we could build and write an article about. Because, as you, <laughs> what's happening? We're making some noise, funny noise. Um, as you see, everything's still okay? Yes. Yeah. You're good. Okay. As you see here, the favorite materials for hams to build with, PVC pipe and copper, copper and mostly water pipe in the familiar J-pole on the right. I don't think there's been more homebrew antennas built in any form than that J-pole. Good antenna, but big and ugly, so forth. So I decided, okay, we talked about it, and on the way home, I brain, brainchilded a design. I want to build a, a simple, simple, simple antenna from PVC pipe and copper. And I went home. Yes. Built this one, as you see on the left, typical tape helical loaded two meter dipole. Wrote this article, sent it into QST. It was accepted for publication. And by the time the next week's meeting at, at the A Street Cafe, it was all a fait accompli. Holds the record now for my fastest antenna. When it goes in, I don't know, but it's been accepted. <coughs> if you want to um, see the article, it's available on my website, w6nbc.com slash articles. And you'll see the, uh, see the article on it, which is uh, in this form right now. Later on, it'll be in PDF magazine form. The antenna is built, as we said, out of PVC pipe and copper, but the copper is not pipe. The copper is aluminum or a, a, a copper tape. You could do this out of aluminum tape, but it'd be just slightly less efficient. But copper tape is readily available. You use 54 inches of it. I bought a roll, this roll, this very same roll you see here, from uh, Amazon.com for, I don't know, nine or $10 or something like that. 45, 45 feet long, one inch wide, mill and a half copper tape. And it's taped onto, helically taped onto, a piece of inch and a quarter PVC pipe with a cap on top which also can be the mast. You don't even need mast clamps. You can just make the antenna and the mast one piece. But uh, the roll of this tape is relatively cheap. The tape is also used, if you want to use the leftovers, and you can put a strip of it, as you can see here, around your planters in your garden, and the snails won't crawl over. The snails don't like to crawl over copper. I think maybe the, the electrolysis in their wet foot uh, bothers them to get the hot foot or something. But you can buy snail tape in garden stores uh, as well. But this, uh, this particular one that I, I bought was uh, from uh, on Amazon was cheaper. So how does this antenna work? Might be a bit uh, interesting to discuss the theory here. All of you, I'm sure, are familiar with using a loading coil to shorten an antenna. On the left, you see that perhaps the most common version of a loading coil, that of a the coil, a loading coil in a mobile HF whip antenna. Here's one. 
and then they've been around for years, way back to the famous bandmaster coils, and now some of the uh, screwdriver coils. But a loading coil, and it's used to shorten an antenna. In a mobile antenna, you got to keep it under something around 10 feet. Otherwise, you're going to uh, you can't drive on the, the road with it. Here's another one in the lower right down here. That's a loading coil used in a, in a typical horizontal wire dipole wound on the classical PVC form, which looks like some 12 gauge wire. But the purpose of the loading coil, of course, is to shorten the antenna. And that's exactly what we do in this two meter antenna. Now there are two ways uh, you, to use a loading coil in an antenna. You can build a small discrete coil that has wire sticking off the end, just like we saw in the previous slide, or uh, in, even in a mobile whip where the mast sticks above and below the, end of the coil. However, as you probably all know, there are antennas in which the coil and the antenna are one and the same thing. This is called continuously loading. Uh, I think the uh, familiar, uh, what's the mobile app, mobile one that uses this technique, the outbacker or something like that, in which the whole antenna is, a, is both an antenna and a loading coil. That works very well. The a loading coil can radiate if it's, if it's big enough. And that's what you see here in this particular design. I have made a continuously loaded two meter antenna by, by helically taping some one inch, one inch mill and a half copper tape to a piece of inch and a quarter PVC. Make it bigger if you want, then you can shorten it even more, but I chose inch and a quarter because it's kind of a inexpensive, so forth. And uh, it's helically wound on the uh, inch and a quarter PVC pipe. and. Uh, and it, it's a, it is a, a complete two meter antenna. There's nothing else there but the tape. That's it. As you can see, the, it, is, it is just slightly off center fed uh, uh, there in the middle. Compared to a five foot long J pole, this is only 18 inches long. It has almost identical performance to a J pole. The only thing that lacks is a little bit its bandwidth, but it has good bandwidth since the tape is a wide conductor. So for a, for a home antenna, uh, this antenna is a hell of a lot stealthier. You know, sticking up beside your house, people would hardly notice the pipe, particularly if you gave it a coat of paint so that the uh, copper foil is not obvious. Although maybe you can hang your sign up as being a barber or something. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> or maybe you can Maybe you could paint the, uh, the, the tape, copper tape red for Christmas or something like that. That's a candy cane. Maybe that's what we need, a candy cane version of this. How does it compare? Well, then that's, of course, a valid question with any antenna. Usually we make comparisons with either, uh, either the isotropic radiator, the one that doesn't exist in DBI, or we compare it to a dipole, a DBD, or dipole. So how does this compare to a dipole? Well, here you can see in the radiation pattern of this particular antenna. On the left is the radiation pattern that you see that would you would see if you were looking at the antenna sideways, you know, looking at it from from the uh, sideways on, or the elevation pattern. As you can see, it's the classical donut-shaped radiation pattern. On the right is the radiation pattern from the top down, or the azimuth pattern. Now the scale on the outside, in this particular case, is in DBI, uh, comparison to an isotropic radiator. And for a J-pole, its gain is about 2.1 DBI. If you look at where the blue circle falls, or the, or the dot on the red circles, the uh, red pattern falls, you see it falls at 1.64 dB. So this antenna is only half a dB down over a J-pole. So in 18 inches and much more stealthy, this is, a, this is quite an advantage over the big, ugly, favorite ham antenna, the J-pole. Now, here's the bandwidth. Pretty good bandwidth, isn't it? 
Uh, I, I could have tweaked it down a little bit lower than this, but this is uh, this is uh, was an adequate amount to use. As you can see, over the pretty much the entire two meter band, um, that the SWR is around 1.2 to one. A little bit of tweaking on the length, and I could have got it down to even less than that, but. Who cares? Anything under three to one works very well. I, by the way, this is a, an actual measurement that I made on this antenna in my workshop using my antenna, antenna analyzer, which, by the way, is a rig expert A1400. And if you want a good antenna analyzer, that's a good antenna analyzer. It's expensive, though. But what the heck? Money's only money. <laughs> All right. How do we build one? Very simple. Any of you who have ever purchased a sheet of uh, self-adhesive material and tried to stick it down on a surface, such as maybe putting shelf, shelf lining inside of a kitchen cabinet or something, or, or sticking vinyl coating on, know that it's not always that easy to apply that stuff. It, doesn't, it sticks in the wrong places and you get bubbles and wrinkles and stuff. So we know that self-adhesive materials which is also true of this copper tape, not really easy to apply. So you need a little help in getting that, that copper tape on that piece of pipe. The way you do it is quite simple. I took the covers of a couple of uh, plastic 8.5 by 11 report covers. They had a heavy, heavy cover on it. In this case, it was orange and, and pretty thick, pretty thick stuff. Nice, heavy-duty, flexible covers. And on my paper cutter, I cut two accurately accurate two-inch wide strips from the eight and a half by eleven covers. Then, uh, lining them up against the yard stick, I taped four of them together until I had a six-foot strip of plastic tape, two inches wide, flexible plastic tape. Then you begin in the middle of the antenna and you wrap it around the antenna, uh, the pole. And when you get it fully wrapped around, then you begin at one end, and with a Sharpie pen, you start marking along the end. You need to begin about an inch and a half below the top of the pipe, so that you got a place for the cap. And use the Sharpie marking pen, or any permanent marking, and mark along one edge until you have a nice, accurate, two-inch spaced helical line drawn down the inch and a half pipe. Then you get out your tape. Start peeling back the, the uh, paper backing that protects the, uh, the glue on the tape and carefully begin applying it at the top of the, top of the piece of PVC, right at the edge of the, of the mark made by the pen. And, uh, and then you start moving slowly down, keeping the tape aligned right along that black edge. You unroll the backing off of the tape slowly, about six inches to a foot at a time so that you don't mess up the tape. Don't try to pull the backing all the way off and then stick it down. Just pull it off slowly a bit at the time. And you apply 54 inches of the tape, beginning near the top. And you'll end up with the dipole, with the antenna on the right. Then you come down the pipe. Roughly three and a half turns from the top which is four and a half turns from the bottom. We'll get to why it's different here in a minute. And you make a gap at that point. Three and a half turns on the top, four and a half turns on the bottom. Then you drill a hole at that point. I used a Harbor Freight step drill, great for drilling uh, large holes in, in surfaces. And uh, that hole is for the uh, feed point, where the coax. Coax runs up the middle of the pipe, coaxially, and has a couple of uh, ring terminals on the end, makes a sharp bend and screws uh, onto the uh, PVC pipe through the three quarter inch hole. And then I you tap two 632 uh, threaded holes through the, copper, through the copper tape. And then with a couple of uh, stainless washers and screws, you attach the, uh, the coax to it. Now, why the three and a, three and a half versus four and a half turns? The reason is this. As most of you know, in theory, uh, a, a plain dipole, a plain wire, thin wire dipole in space has an impedance of 72 ohms. 
This dipole, because it's shortened, is less than that. At the middle of this dipole, the impedance is only about 25 ohms. Any dipole that's shortened by any means, the impedance at the feed point in the middle is always less than 25 ohms. But that's an advantage here. And the reason is this. What's the impedance at the end of this, of this helical dipole? Uh, what's the impedance at the, at the end of any dipole compared to what it is in the middle? It's high, isn't it? High impedance at both ends. Well, what does that mean? Well, that means, between, that means that between the middle of that, of that dipole and the ends of this dipole, which is 25 ohms, and either end, there are two places where the impedance is 50 ohms, exactly what we want. As you can see here, the feed point now is placed at the 50 ohm point, which is three and a half turns from the top, four and a half turns from the bottom. That explains why it's an off-center fit, slightly off-center bend dipole. To connect to the antenna, you're going to need this, this little appliance. I made up a six foot length of mini eight coax, divided the ends of the wire, unbraided uh, about four inches of it here, and then, and then weatherproof the ends with heat shrink tubing. Uh, easy enough to do, you all know how to do that. But you want to leave a little gap between it and some, some crimped on or soldered on ring terminals. That little gap that I show here uh, between uh, the ring terminals and the tubing is so that the, is so that the uh, wires can make a sharp bend when they go through the hole in the, in the pipe and connect to the copper foil. Then you want to connect the center conductor, which is the one at the top, the fatter one, which still has the, uh, the uh, uh, dielectric on it, except in the gap. Uh, you connect that to the top, and then you, can, then you connect the unbraided and wrapped together shield at the bottom. Uh, you can do it the other way around if you want to, but that's the other way is the way I... Uh -oh. There's another factor with this antenna, or frankly with any coaxial dipole. The, the coax needs to be in the center of the pipe if you're feeding it up through the bottom of the antenna, or feeding up, in this case, through the bottom turns of the helix. As you probably all remember from previous talks, what I like for doing this is the, is the polyethylene foam tubing that you can buy at any hardware store that's used to insulate hot water pipes. If you buy the half-inch ver version for half-inch pipes, it works great inside of this antenna. Uh, for two-inch pipe, you want to buy the three-quarter stuff. But by the length of this, of this uh, polyethylene foam, insulating foam used for half-inch copper water pipes. It's cheap, a couple of bucks, and you buy 10 feet of it. That's the pipe insulation right there. An alternate to this, which is the one I used in my dipole, uh, was to take a 12-inch piece of PVC and put some end caps on it, half-inch PVC, small stuff, and put PVC caps on it, and then drill those caps uh, with a quarter inch hole. And that'll slide up inside of the, uh, of the uh, inch and a quarter PVC and, uh, uh, and keep the coax. Mm, drop out. Oh my. Froze up. You lost the Very connection. sec. Also. Losing the connection. Mm -hmm. Losing the internet? Probably. Yeah. Well, this antenna, I never built an antenna. They will, but it may not work like you want to. So, uh, the way I found this easiest with this one is just start stuffing some coax, some of this mini 8 coax, up into the bottom of the PVC pipe. And it'll form a nice little four turn coil and make a perfect ballon for you for two meters. If you want to go to the trouble, you can drill a hole in the side of the pipe and wind it on the outside, but I, I find that's unnecessary. Also, it's less attractive. Now, weatherproofing this antenna. Well, the cap at the top will keep the weather out of the top from running down from the, bottom, the top. 
The copper foil itself will work fine out in the weather. It'll just turn dark over time if you want to. You can paint the antenna if you want to with any sort of typical uh, emulsion, uh, water-based emulsion paint. It'll work fine, have no problem. Or you can do as I did and just take some of that, you know, that highly stretchy, self-balkanizing ceiling tape. Uh, you can, you know, they sell it. They sell it on the uh, the internet and the um, infomercials. What would you pay now for this seal, self-sealing tape? You can seal up anything, and we'll send you a free orange peeler if you do. Walmart sells it. Home Depot sells it. Yeah. You all know. You know all that goes. I I, I have a bun bunch of rolls of this stuff. Great stuff for sealing up coax and stuff. Much better than plastic electrical tape. It stays permanently and it doesn't goop up at it, everything. Now, finally, how do you tune and match this antenna? Really, it's very simple. This, per this particular antenna, the SWR, is determined by getting the feed point exactly at the right offsetter amount. So the SWR is set in this antenna by the ratio between the number of turns at the top and the number of turns at the bottom. In other words, to get to the 50 ohm point, just slightly above the middle in this particular case. So to adjust the SWR, you merely make minor changes in the length of the upper and or the lower until you get a low SWR. To tune, to tune the antenna into the 2 meter band, you change the total length or take equal amounts off of either end. That's easy to do. Now, when you're tuning any antenna, not just this one, but this, it works with this antenna too. The first thing you tune with any antenna when you go to tune it is tune the SWR first. Don't worry about what frequency it's on. It, it, uh, this one, I think, started down somewhere about a 135 megahertz when I, I first made it, because I made it a little longer than 54 inches. I think I put 60 inches of tape on to start with. Uh, tune the SWR first. And uh, by, I did that simply by cutting off little bits of the end until I found the, I found the SWR, the low SWR point. I used my antenna analyzer to do that, hooked up to the bottom of that, uh, of that, uh, of, of the little pigtail. After you get the SWR tuned, you will find that when you go to tune the, uh, tune the antenna's total length, the SWR will not change very much. Uh, if you, if you, if you, just whack off both ends, the SWR will change very little. You'll only have to make a minor adjustment to SWR. You might not even have to make one when you have the final tune. So tune the SWR first, any antenna, and tune the length of the antenna or their resonant frequency second. That's the approach you make to tuning any antenna, whether it be a beam or a dipole or a J-pole or anything. Now, in case you go too far, or to make these adjustments and you cut off too much, just add some tape back. Overlap a piece of tape with the existing tape that's on there by about an inch. You might think, well, won't the, uh, won't the adhesive that's on the tape uh, uh, not make good contact? Contact is not made by, uh, by simple conduction. It's made by capacitive coupling. Uh, so. Uh, the capacitive coupling of a one-inch overlap is enough to make the adhesive on the tape have no effect on the antenna. So you don't have to worry about cutting off too much or cutting off too, or having too little. You can always put some back. Finally, what are the benefits of this little antenna? And here they are. There are five of them. The thing's only 18 inches tall. A J pole that works almost the same. 58 inches tall and ugly. Which one is which one is the neighbor going to notice? Just a simple, plain piece of white PVC pipe sticking up, or that ugly, ugly copper J pole that everybody thinks is the miracle antenna? It is a miracle antenna. It's just a good antenna. Also, it's simple, easy to build. Yeah, that, this is why it was instantly accepted by, by QSD for publication, because it's what they love, simple antennas. Less noticeable, stealthy antennas. They love those. 
And as I've already pointed out, you can combine the antenna with the mast so that you don't have to use any ugly or expensive antenna clamps. If you want the thing up 10 feet in the air, just stick it on the end of a piece of one piece of 10 foot long inch and a quarter PVC and you've got it. Now, frankly, if you, you, if you want to, you can make this antenna bigger in diameter. Use two inch PVC if you want, and then it'll be even less turns. But uh, and I just decided inch and a quarter was a good compromise. It's also inexpensive. Even when, even when considering the price of the copper tape and so forth, amortize the cost of this antenna is less than $10, including the mast and, the, and any clamps and anything else. All in, 10 bucks. Can't beat it for price. Those of you who do bikeathons, uh, you know, and uh, and go out and help people run run races and so forth, and want a portable portable high performance antennas for your for your base locations, try one of these. Very portable, very light, very easy. Great portable antenna. And that's and that's it. Now, what am I showing you here? This is the, is the latest cousin of this antenna. This is, this is a picture of it sitting in my workshop. I decided, well, if I can make a loading coil on a two meter antenna, I can make a loading coil for an HF antenna in the same way, except I'm gonna need more turns and a bigger coil. Well, here's the bigger coil form. I went over to Home Depot, bought one of the cardboard tubes that they use to pour concrete form, long 12 inches in diameter, and I wrap 23 turns of the same copper tape around it. With this loading coil in a wire dipole in your attic, you get an antenna that's only 20 feet long. It performs almost identically to a wire dipole that's 64 feet long. Well, this is an antenna dipole. Haven't finished the article yet, still working on it. Haven't sent it to QSD, but I'm sure they're going to buy it. It's another love it, cheap, cute, efficient, hidden antenna. And that's all, folks. Thanks for attending. <laughs> Thank you, John.